I guess it's the desert island thing. Like, if you could only take one peptide to a desert island, what it, what would it be? Uh, and for me, that would be thymosin alpha one, which is sometimes shortened to uh, a TA one. So why is it my favorite? I love thymosin alpha one because of its strengthening and regulating effect on the immune system. Um, our immune systems are under assault these days more than ever before you know there's um i don't think you have to go too far into conspiracy world to say that there are factions out there that are actually looking to create more and more dangerous and um um contagious diseases right that's part of like a military approach for many countries so the idea that uh, we don't have to worry about our immune system in this day and age is foolish. As we've talked about in uh, other episodes, the immune system is impacted not just by organisms, but also by um, toxins of all kinds, whether it's heavy metals and mycotoxins and pesticides, xenoestrogens, BPA, you know, it goes on and on and on and on. All of those things are also negatively impacting our immune system. Stress is negatively impacting our immune system. So we have so much going on. What is thymosin alpha-1? It's basically the primary peptide that um, supports the functioning of the immune system. So a lot of peptides and hormones are basically going in there and like upregulating or downregulating. So one we've talked about, for instance, a lot is the thy thyroid. And basically more thyroid hormone means more mitochondrial activity. Less thyroid hormone means less mitochondrial activity. Well, it's pretty similar for this, for thymosin alpha-1 and the immune system. More thymosin alpha-1 means more immune system activity, more strength of the immune system. The main gland in the body that will produce thymosin alpha-1 um, is called the thymus. And the thymus is this little gland above the heart. And I say it's little. And the reason is that when we're very young, the thymus is actually a big strong organ which is you know really i guess creating and pumping up our immune system to begin with and then there's a lot of speculation which seems reasonable that as we get older that thymus really does shrill away compared to before compared to any other organ it really um gets a lot weaker and is producing a lot less thymus than alpha one as a result of that and so because of that process our immune system isn't working as well now it's good to try and rejuvenate our thymus with all kinds of techniques to try and um, uh, get our immune system creating as much as it can endogenously. But still, as we talked about at the beginning, if, if you want to cheat, if you want to optimize either way, if you want to uh, be the best you can be. So when would I take thymus and alpha one? I actually take it frequently. I do it a little bit differently than what they say. They tend to talk about doing um, a high dose you know, periodically, like every few days, um, or just taking it if you're concerned about an infection. My experience with it is that there's no, like, upper limit, and there's also no tolerance. The only thing that could be said about using it a lot might be that it's wasteful, that you don't need it. But the way I look at it is that, unlike with thyroid hormone, unlike with, say, testosterone, um, there really isn't such a thing as too much. And that's been borne out in the literature that it hasn't been proven that, oh, if you take, you know, 10 times as much of this as normally people take, that there's any problem ever, even if you do it for a very long time. And I think that's for the reason I said, like, if the thymus were strong and healthy, like it was when you were really young, it would be producing so much of this stuff. And so the fact that you're adding some, it helps, but it's still not gonna be any, you know, it's going to be very hard for you to, just in terms of money, unless I guess you were very wealthy, um, it's not the cheapest peptide. So you'd have to spend so much to get to a level where it might ever be excessive. I guess that might be the reason why no one's ever done it before. So I like to do it a lot because I like to support my immune system a lot. I would definitely make sure that I did it before a flight. If it was possible to take it with me to wherever country I was going to, I would definitely do that as well. Um, I would have it before, even before I go into a big city, before I had public transport, I mean, just anything. And if that sounds over the top and uptight, I wouldn't be like scared if I didn't take it. I don't mean that, but I just mean, why not support yourself? Why not give yourself a boost, you know? 
Um, so yeah, I'm a big, and of course, Fimacin Alpha One. It's a it's a fairly big long peptide, and my understanding is that your body it makes smaller peptides out of that, like it cleaves the peptide into pieces, and then those pieces have other functions that are also beneficial secondarily. So even if um, you don't feel like your main immune system needs supplementing, I feel it, it definitely also has secondary benefits. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Fimacin Alpha One. The only thing that really um, would hold me back from recommending it uh, to a loved one or something like that uh, would be potentially cost. Right, yeah, because I was going to ask if there are any kind of safety concerns or any space within, like, you, but I think you touched on it with dosing and, and things like that. But let's just say you've got somebody out there that's got an autoimmune disease where they say, well, wait a minute, if I've got autoimmune and, and you're upregulating and my, my immune system's already causing me damage, you know, can you speak to that? Yeah, that's a great question. So again, I can't, you know, make any recommendations to anyone watching, but if I think of myself, if I had an autoimmune disease and then I started considering it, um, I would take a lower amount, but I have not seen it to begin with, but I have not seen any evidence that it would impact that negatively. I've only seen evidence that it would help or do nothing because it's not an immune booster. Like, um, it, 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 well, it is, but it it supports the regulatory function of the immune system as much as it does the um, attacking part of the immune system. For want of a better word, you know, a lot of the, the different interleukins and the different uh, constituents of the immune system, they're kind of divided into um, either those which are actively, aggressively seeking things to um, uh, deal with, let's just say, to be general as possible, or it's regulating those. They're kind of like managers of those, right? Or generals, right? Troops. Let's not create too many troops. Let's not send too many that way. Let's, right? Let's um, let's not have them attack that. That's actually a, a piece of human tissue. You shouldn't be attacking that, guys. So it's almost like a manager. And so Phimacin Alpha 1 supports both the regulatory and the the strengthening of the um uh dealing with let's say attacking function although it could be you know it's not necessarily attacking because it could be you know dealing with uh, waste products and stuff like that but yeah the, the type that's actually doing stuff um the type that's regulatory regulatory gets just as much support so for instance i would feel much better about using this if i had an autoimmune that disease than i would about using let's say echinacea which is much more of an immune stimulator. Anecdotally, I'll say from my experience as well, um, I've noticed when taking it at the beginning of some kind of infection that it actually makes the symptoms worse sometimes for a few hours, which I interpret as you know strengthening the fighting part of it. And so that's the thing that could support what you're saying, Chrissy, that that p possibility does exist with someone with autoimmunity, which is why I said I would also start slowly if I had autoimmunity. I would start a very low dose and then build up and make sure that I wasn't having a reaction to it. But then I found that after that initial period, then with any kind of infection, it's the opposite. It actually makes the symptoms become less. So for me, it seems to only um, make symptoms worse during the first part of an illness when an infection is first there. So it's possible. I think it's unlikely. And as I said, none of the literature supports that it would be an issue, but I would still be careful. Are there any kind of different forms or if somebody's looking into this that, uh, you know, is there a best form or is there just one type? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, that's really the same as like all peptides, which we talked about uh, in the, uh, you know, the full peptide episode. Uh, but I will say this type only works um as an injectable you can't use it as a nasal spray and all the rest and that's one of the other reasons it may be off-putting to someone obviously if i was stuck at a desert island and there was not <laughs> access to <laughs> safe <laughs> ways of administering it it wouldn't be my choice i'm kind of you know pre presuming that and i think that may be on a practicality was one of the reasons why people often recommend to do say two doses a week rather than every day um because you know, a lot of people don't want to have an injection every day. And in fact, I don't have an injection every day. I I do it kind of just based on when I feel like it now. Um, although for a while when I needed to support my immune system, I was doing it uh, regularly. So Elwin, what dosages would be recommended for thymosin alpha-1? 
Obviously, I can't recommend anything, but I'll say from my perspective, I would use um, around half a milligram uh, per day if I wanted to support my immune system, you know, for an ongoing reason. If I were faced with, you know, an imminent infection, maybe someone in my house has got something or whatever, then I might do one milligram, even one and a half milligram a day. Um, but again, as I said before, the main rate limiting one of this to me is really cost, uh, rather than that you can ever necessarily overdose. As far as I've seen, please correct me if uh, you've seen any evidence to the contrary in the comments. Um, so, but yeah, that's a good amount. That's a good amount between half and one and a half milligrams. 